So the index closed at 7,930, pretty much moving sideways the entire week, unable to breach 8,000. What are we expecting this week? Um, I, I think you should still expect uh, a move. Like investors, I mean, the market overall is expensive. It's trading at about 22 times earnings. But I think there's still a lot of interest in the market, not just from the local side, but even from foreign investors as well. In fact, when you speak to foreign investors, they're asking about some of the small mid-cap companies. We did, however, see a lot of a lot of selling last week from foreign investors. Now, given that um, that the th second quarter earnings, you know, are done in terms of their reports, what can we expect this week? What will help boost the markets, if any? I, I think pretty much it, it's just there, there aren't really any events that that should uh, end up being a catalyst. But it's merely, I think, you're going to see a lot of investors again switch from some of the companies that have done well, sell out of those, and move over to. Uh, some of the laggards uh, year to date, and we can talk about some of those uh, companies later. Right, because you're watching SM, SM Investments yeah. Corp. Now you like SM, but the stock is also looking quite expensive. It is now up 19.44 percent year to date. So tell mm. us about that. I mean, if you look at SM Investments, um, I, I think you have several catalysts going for it. One, uh, they recently uh, consol consolidated a lot of the uh, retail assets. Some of the retail assets were were owned by the. Uh, by the principles of SM Investments, the C family, they've consolidated it all uh, now under SM Retail, which is uh, owned by 77% uh, owned by SM Investments. So, uh, potentially, indications are so far uh, that the, the the consolidation of the of the retail asset should result in a company with bigger earnings, uh, bigger revenues, and definitely bigger market share. And and given the Duterte's administration, uh, the thrust is to to invest more outside uh, Metro Manila into the, in Visayas, into Mindanao. And SM Retail uh, so far has already been doing that. They've been doing that uh, for the past uh, several years. If you look at more of the openings, it's really outside uh, Metro Manila. So that should be provide a boost as well. I think a catalyst as well is that they, I think by the third quarter, uh, they should be giving indications of what the a consolidated SM retail should look like. So that could put, be a potential catalyst for SM investments uh, overall. Now we have also URC. Now with URC, if we take a look at the stock chart, really doing quite a seesaw. It was uh, five days in the red and now three days of gains, although it did cut back its earnings outlook, saying that, you know, Vietnam, t um, it might um, cause it to pull back a little, but making that big um, buyout, co buying consolidated snacks purchase. How are you seeing URC? Oh, definitely that changed things. If you look at the earnings, maybe there was, uh, there was some disappointment. Analysts had to, uh, had to revise downwards their, their estimates on URC. Uh, but this acquisition has, has given a bit of a boost to the stock. Right, we see here that big uh, the five-day dip and then now it's starting to move up. Yeah, we actually still see upside from that. Um, our target price for URC is around 204 uh, uh, pesos. We think that the acquisition added at least uh, 10 pesos uh, to the fair value of the company. And that is even without synergies. And we know that they already have another acquisition. In, they recently made an acquisition a few years back in New Zealand. So you could have potential uh, synergies over there. Right, because we're going to ask if, if you also believe, because last Goku we were saying that it could boost their sales to 6 to 7%. Yeah. And as you mentioned, they also purchased Griffins previously in New Zealand. Now, so do you see this really um, helping URC? Yeah, I, I think I think the, the 10 peso boost from the acquisition is, is still fairly conservative because you eventually, you know, maybe in the next two to three years, you could, but there's potential uh, room for uh, further gains from synergies and uh, yeah that that's potential uh, that's a potential boost for URC. Now how about Metro Pacific? Now Metro Pacific um, net income was up 4.35 yeah. billion against um, last year's. Now we're taking a look at analyst ratings um, eight buy and four hold. What's your call in Metro Pacific? Metro Pacific I mean if you look at the company's own internal valuation I think they have an internal valuation now of 911 um, and and you know there are potential catalysts. I mean one, I mean, there a few of their businesses are are are, ch are still trying to are, are ask, actually asking for uh, tariff increases. For example, their uh, Cavitex, the toll road business, Cavitex and uh, SETEX. Although it looks like the um, tra transportation secretary to God is bent on not allowing any increases as of yet until we improve these infrastructures. I think you know. I think what will end up happening with a lot of these uh, concession agreements, they'll probably have to just um, push it back. Uh, later, but then when you actually do run the calculations and you know do your analysis of what the incremental changes to the company, it, it should be positive. Although 
most of the gains will be probably be back ended in order not to you know not to upset i guess the I, in order to make sure that the price increases aren't too sharp. So there's still a positive outlook, except maybe on the later part of the year. Now, how about ICTSI? Now, ICTSI also, if you look at the chart, we can also see it, you know, do it quite very volatile. But analysts seem to be liking the stock. Yeah, I, I, they, you know, I think the important thing to look at with ICTSI is is really the gr the incremental growth in their port capacity. So in the second half of this year. Uh, they have about three uh, new ports uh, coming online. Uh, there's uh, Argentina, uh, there's Colombia, and Congo. I think the company in particular is very uh, bullish on both their Congo and uh, Colombia ports. In terms of the Congo port, I think the, the yields uh, per TEU there are f much higher than they are on average for ICTSI's other ports. And second, for Colombia, I think there's already another port operator there who's been in operation, I think, for the past five years. I think they're running close to full capacity. That, so that bodes well for uh, utilization of ICTSI's uh, so port in Colombia moving so forward. So expected to give a positive um, earnings yeah, output pretty soon. I, I think in the medium term, ICTSI should be able to generate at least about, uh, you know, uh, EBITDA growth per annum in the, in the mid-teams. So that's, that's, that's good. Now, I think the company's trading at about... 10 and a half, 11 times uh, EV EBITDA, uh, which in this market is, is still, I think, fairly attractive. All right. Thank you so much, Hatch, for spending your morning with You're us welcome. today.